Hello and welcome to lesson number 6.3 where we will talk about forms. So you might have noticed that if we use the identify feature functions it shows a lot of information. Let's have a look here on this example from, from the shipped in data. Use the identify feature tool, click on the street and there's a lot, there are a lot of attributes um, that are shown and most of them to be clear, they are not interesting, nor are they are holding any information at all, right? So placement is empty, smoothness is empty, turn double, so double or color lanes is empty, and so on. So there's a lot of non-used attributes in our data sets. And we will talk about when we digitize things, we would like to concentrate on the most important attributes and therefore forms comes into place. First of all, let's have a look here on the roads uh, layer. And these are all the fields that are in these attributes forms. So you can auto generate um, a form that keeps all the information here and everything is stored as a text edit. So if you create a new street here, you will need to fill in a text edit and it is shown to you, right? And then there are the drag and drop designer where you can select, oh, well, let's remove everything first. Go with the name, go with the highway, go with, I don't know, max speed, lanes, and one way, right? So this is everything I need to know for the time being. And uh, just press on OK. Now let's check again what is shown to me. Oh, well, it's not very sexy representation because the, um, the field is too big but let's have a look so i see the name i see the highway max speed lanes and so on quite good already right so let's press on console and this comes into place when you are editing items right so let's go with the edit section here on this roads layer we will not save the edits but once i create a new line here just a, an example i now just only need to fill in these five features yeah, attributes and this is more convenient like oh well, where is the line where i need to fill in one way oh there it is and so forms are or comes in handy when you need to digitize and need to digitize fast once again have a look here on the roads there's also an option to um work with these features right so one way one way is either yes or no right there so there's no there's no gray in this um, in this item it is defined as text but i would assume that this is a boolean field right so let's have a look is there a checkbox yes there is a checkbox item so i can change the widget type to be checkbox and let's find out what happens now click on apply say yes once again we will digitize right click oh now i can only simply or i can simply draw, draw mark this as a one way quite convenient right okay let's cancel this again another item is to say well uh, let's have a look here at max speed there is a default section once you have an idea well normally i digitize highways right so you don't want to have all the times to to write down highways so you can say highway let's have here and say secondary in 80% of the cases, this is secondary, and so it is. Let's make a mark there. So secondary. Once again, digitize. There it is. So it's already filled in, and we can use this. Let's cancel this. Once again, have a look here on highway. Now, default value is secondary. Let's remove this and say, well, it is not a text edit, ed edit because I don't want to... I don't want to allow to write in everything that the user wants. So let's use uh, um, the option to have unique values. Unique values, the user can select one of the values already used in the field. If editable, a line edit is shown with auto completion support. Otherwise, a combo box is used. Great feature, just press on OK. I would like to use this check out the results so what i can do now i can select between different items that are already part of the data set great way to work fast um 
then there is another option so normally you are presented with thumbs something but you would like to add it maybe not in the in the big table in the big attribute table here so that's how we open attribute table so there are a lot of now it's also used in the forms or by the forms so i have now only these five items but i can switch over to hold on a second i need to close this window there's the form view and there's a table view so normally the table view uh, contains all the information right and you can now edit inside the table view or you can edit inside the form view like here san patrick street right street click on save and everything will be fine but um there's also another option because sometimes you you need to find the item of choice right of course it is somehow selected now in the form view so if i go here and say let's move the current selection to the top zoom to the top as well no oh, there was nothing selected so that's why nothing has changed okay but my point is here you can also use the item identify feature tool to make your edits so this is now the boss lily street and you can easily add your items here as well press console and um, this is one way to work with the data um, so keep in mind you have different options you can assign default values you can decide to choose just a custom set and then there is an option to design your own tools or your own forms. Therefore, you need the Qt Designer. Qt Designer is available as a standalone package here on build-system.fman.io. There, there you can download the Qt Designer. Sometimes it's shipped alongside with uh, QGIS. So use a Qt Designer. I've already have it open and once you're there you can create a new form and this is a dialog with buttons in the bottom so create one and now you can design well i would like to have according to my layer here to my layer here which is the roads layer another custom layer we have used in one in one lesson uh it should have an input for type and width right so these are the only items i would like to have there and so i need to have a label with the this should be label and should be type right alongside with that i need a line edit to type in the type but due to the fact that the type is not or well, it's not user specific so or it's not according to the user input it should be some sort of um classified categorized values so there should be a drop down box or whatsoever we will use this information so i'll remove this one not a line edit we will use a combo box combo box there you are double click on it create new item secondary create new item primary and tertiary okay and then there is a new um, spin box we will use a spin box for the width we will name the spin box not spin box but width to make sure that the uh, that QGIS is able to read the information from there and paste it into the attribute forms and this is a thing called type then we need another label for the width width and we will assign everything here in mark everything and assign it into an horizontal box layout now select this one this will be there and the whole layout comes into here 
move it to the top. Center, console, and OK button there. Goes here. Maximum size, maximum width should be 250. No, oh, it's too small. So let's go with 300. Let's have a look whether this will be fine. No, it's not. So go with 400. Is sufficient. Maximum height should be 150. Anything else? Yeah, we need some sort of default parameter, right? So you can go there, set a value, prefix, minimum, maximum. Maximum 99 is just fine. Is there some sort of um, default value? Special value tax read only no frame. Let's go with 99 or with 10. Yeah, so this is a default value and um, current text is primary. So this is a primary text and so we will work with this. This is a new form, customized. So fields are alongside with each other. Let's have a look whether the tabs will work fine. Yeah, seems like. So have a look here on the tab settings. Oh, but let's leave it like it is for now. Just save it. We'll save it here for new roads UI. Roads 2.ui. Okay. Close this one. And now let's have a look here. Go to the attributes form. Select provide UI file. We will use the current roads UI. Say okay. Let's first have a look on the on the attribute table. So the attribute table should now consider not the attribute table but the attribute form should now consider our values, right? So does it work? Let's have a look here. Are the items filled? We have one hundred zero zero, um, but the type is not is not shown because there's street path and track in it. And these are not designed in our UI file, right? We have a combo box that was working with different types. Let's open up the combo box again. Well, object name is type. So let's add street and path. And track. Okay, save again. Right click, go to the attribute table. Not working yet. Let's create a new one. Right click. Go with path, set it to 50, 12. Let's go with that, save it, and there it is. Let's open it up again the attribute table, attribute form. I can edit it now, but it is not shown in the values. Let's have a look on the identify feature tool. Type is not listed here as well. That's a pity. Are we working with the correct information? Type. No path street track. I think it's due to the fact that it's working with the combo box and not the line edit. So let's remove this one again. Delete and add a line edit. Name this type. 
save it. Reload this one just to make sure. Okay. Go to the identify feature tool. So it's now showing up. So it's able to pass the information. Let's create a new street then. Type is secondary with this 50. And I've just pressed the enter button. That was an error. I need to press OK. So that's a way to play around with these forms. But you can see, well, we are mixing up two different technologies. On the one hand, we have, we have Qt. There should be some translation between a combo box and an entry. Then we have QGIS on the other side um, that comes with a, a similar approach. So you can design, so, uh, so you can define some items here where you say, well, this is a type, this is ID, whatsoever. But there is no combo box here. You can simply choose to have a classification or um, or the um, the unique values setting here. But once I'm doing this and going back to the attribute table and the attribute forms, go there. It still keeps my uh, form view right so there's I would prefer to stick as long as possible with the QGIS standard so creating forms with Q designer might be a good idea for some use cases but if you really not need to do this stick with the standard so go here to the auto generate or to the drag and drop designer Design what you would like to have here. Design the type of widget type, an alias. Sometimes your features have, or your attributes have, very cryptical names or, or not so easy to read names. You can design your an, an alias. Let's go, let's go with with, right? With with, come on. So uh, show label uh, should be editable. Label on top could be as well, and um, say okay. What is happening now is that I do have a different naming in the form. So let's have a look here with the identify tool. Now it is written with a uppercase W, and uh, so this makes it easy to to customize your experience with QGIS. And if you save the project. Uh, all the settings in the properties for the dialogues, for the forms, for the layers will be saved as well. So it's easy to, to, to prepare a project to work with different users alongside. And uh, so every user has a streamlined procedure to digitize and to edit current data or new data. I hope you found this somehow interesting. If you have any questions, just drop a comment. Um, or ask it and I will try to answer it right away. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.